Here is a remarkable dilemma. As occurred in all prior visits to comets, no appreciable water ice was seen on the surface of the active comet Temple 1. From the first disclosures of dry cometary surfaces, theorists speculated that such surfaces simply hid the icy, watery content beneath the surface. They surmised that, in response to solar warming, pressurized pockets of subsurface water vapor formed, exploding through the dry crust to create the observed jets of active comets. Of course, the envisioned rupture of the surface would expose the presumed ice below. But as occurred in all visits to comets, no detection of Temple 1 subsurface ice was ever reported. Nevertheless, mission scientists tell us that infrared readings did detect substantial water ice in the ejecta cloud. The enigma deserves investigation. What happened at the surface and below the surface at the moment of impact? Most NASA scientists interpreted the fast-moving cloud as vaporized silicates. The cloud was self-luminous at an estimated 1,000 to 2,000 degrees Kelvin, and the low angle of the impact and blast propelled the ejecta downrange. The infrared readings of the ejecta occurred about three seconds after impact, as the cloud came into the view of the infrared camera. These readings show what NASA scientists describe as a narrow beam of water. This water column was easily distinguished from the rapidly moving dust cloud and was very close to vertical directly over the impact site. That's a bizarre contrast to the trajectory of the dust cloud. How did a vertical column of water get instantaneously separated from an explosion of dust heated to over 1,000 degrees and propelled downrange? The electric comet model offers an answer. The heated silicate cloud would be ionized, a plasma, a conductive pathway for an explosive electric discharge. The evidence indicates the discharge occurred between a negatively charged nucleus and a surrounding region of positive charge. An abundance of hydrogen ions gathered at or close to the surface of the nucleus would provide the necessary conditions for two things. First, an instantaneous electrical breakdown or discharge on impact and second, an equally instantaneous electrochemical response to the discharge. Consider what is already known from laboratory experiments. In a condition of electrical breakdown, hydrogen ions from the solar wind, combining with the oxygen and silicates, can produce an abundance of hydroxyl and or water. This very process has been proposed to explain the enigmatic water on the planet Mercury. The electric comet model suggests that the detected column of water directly over the impact site occurred along the path of an electric discharge, and that always means roughly perpendicular to the surface. Water created explosively, electrochemically, in the ejecta, even if no water lay beneath the dry surface of Comet Temple 1. This intriguing answer takes us deeper into the infrared readings. The conventional model predicted that comet water ice would contain substantial quantities of dust. This dust content would be expected to show up as refractory particles in the ice of the collimated ejecta plume. But amazingly, the ice particles themselves were free of dust. It seems the instruments measured virgin water, water freshly formed, as one would expect from the instantaneous electrochemistry of water production from hydrated silicates. 
This very point is emphasized in a recent analysis by Dr. Franklin Anariba, a specialist in electrochemistry at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Allow this possibility into discussions of comet science, in particular the unsolved mysteries of missing water and water creation by comets, and the picture changes dramatically. When we follow this possibility, the missing water on the surface of Temple 1 becomes an affirmation of the electric comet model.